chase him into the pride. Go, 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 quick. Straight ahead, straight ahead. What's the matter? What's the matter? Set the camera. You see them, sir? He's got it right here. Okay, stop, 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 stop. The Serengeti is a merciless place, ruled by professional killers. Any moment here could be the last. to capture this carnage. He wants to film a complete hunt from stock to chase, takedown, and kill. But it won't be easy. The terrain here is vast and brutal, and the predators are always on the move. Andy's got the right gear for the job, but getting to the Serengeti is a mission in itself. The long trip is just the first step to finding the action. But Andy's always got friends ready to help. Hey, 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 hey. yeah, what's How up? You doing, my friend? Good, Richard. Yeah. Good to see you, man. Now it's time for some action. We're gonna head to Arusha. And uh, get these filming vehicles kitted out and ready for some serious carnage in the Serengeti. And this right here, Richard, is the best Hi. film driver in Tanzania. Andy needs to customize the rig for filming. And Richard Nashula's shop has everything they need. One of the most critical aspects of wildlife filmmaking, particularly in Africa, in lion country, is your filming vehicle. We'll install a mount there. Hopefully I can get something up top for the cheetah chases. All right, so I think we could probably have to do some welding and some general mischief. Let's tear this thing apart. For 12 hours a day over the next two weeks, this tiny space will be Andy's office and his safety cage. Well, cool, man. I think we're done here. Let's hit the road. Andy's reached Serengeti National Park. Over 15,500 square kilometers of plains and woodlands at the northern border of Tanzania. Two big cats stalk this landscape. Each uses a unique set of tactics to hunt their prey. Lions are ambush predators, using cover to creep in and launch a coordinated assault. Cheetahs exploit their pure flat-out speed over open plains with long lines of sight. Andy must adapt his own strategy to these tactics if he hopes to be successful. To start, he secured special permission to drive off-road and follow the action wherever it happens. Check it out. This is my Land Rover, fully kitted up, ready to go. I even tagged it with my initials. Andy, Brandy, Casa Grandy. Hopefully it'll bring me some good luck. Got a lot of work to do, so let's get started. Today, conditions are perfect for the cheetahs. There's lots of gazelle here, so if the cheetah are hunting anywhere, it should be here. And uh, what I like about cheetahs is they hunt during the day, primarily, and they hunt a lot. Richard's been spotting game for decades. 
and uh, see what happens. Could be a long day. It usually is. Andy's brought a special high-tech camera to capture the cheetah's blinding speed in super slow motion. Normal cameras, video cameras, they shoot about 30 frames per second. And so if you're just shooting with a normal camera and you roll, for one second, it takes 30 photographs. This thing takes over 1,000 in one second. It's crystal clear, super slow motion, and the shots are just mind-blowing. I mean, you could even be brushing your teeth and it looks cool, but with cheetahs, they run so fast that if you film it in real time, it's just a blur. With this thing, it gives you a way to deconstruct that speed. The cheetah begins to stalk her prey. And Andy's on it. That's a cool little stalking shot there. We've got a cheetah hunting gazelle. She's up and seems very active. But the gazelle are on to her. They seem to be very aware. They know that the cheetah's here. So they keep running away and um, she keeps blowing her chances and blowing mine to get a kill. There she is, sitting down. She hunkers down in the shade to save her energy and wait out the blistering heat. Patience is critical for filming wildlife. Well, we can wait. We're professionals at waiting. Except I really don't like waiting. Waiting just takes so long. sitting with the cheetah for uh, more than half the day now and she's um, just sitting down so anyway the producers uh, gave me a gift they haven't really told me what it was but they said I'm gonna love it so usually I don't love what producers give me it's usually a hard time but uh, maybe I'll get lucky on this one so let's check it out What's in? It's a remote control truck. Basically, a remote control camera car. This thing is gonna be awesome. Check it out. Uh, instructions. definition camera mounts to the front, an HD camera mounted to the back, full digital camo, big truck tires. I'm excited. I want to get this thing out there. Andy's confined to his vehicle for safety. This new toy will let him get a camera into the action. But to deploy the car, Andy needs to get on a kill. And today is not the day with this cheetah. So, all day with the cheetah, and uh, I pretty much got nothing. I think they call it getting skunked. I totally got skunked today. What did the cheetah say to the cameraman? Did the cheetah say that maybe tomorrow? <laughs> maybe tomorrow. <Okay. laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> maybe tomorrow. Filming days are limited, and the odds are stacked against a wildlife cameraman. But in the Serengeti, luck can change in a heartbeat. The next morning, Andy runs head-on into an army on the move. 
lions are using the road to patrol their territory. And they found what they're looking for. There's about 17 of them, and uh, there's about 11 big buffalo. It's in tall grass, perfect conditions for hunting. Andy takes a tactical position to film the attack. But the herd takes a hard turn behind his field of view. is in on a calf and takes it down hard. Keep going, go, go, go. And he has missed the takedown with his slow motion camera. So we've just had a buffalo kill. So he pulls in close for the final moments. Yeah, get up high, get up high, get up high. Go forward, go forward. Okay, stop. So we've just had lions kill a buffalo baby, a small buffalo. <sighs> the buffalo are coming back. They're killing the baby buffalo now. The baby's done. But the action isn't over. While Andy's on this kill, the lions give chase again. Let's put another one. Let's put another one. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Two buffalo kills in one morning. Another baby or another big one? So they've just killed another baby buffalo. They haven't killed it. They've taken it down. The buffalo are charging. He's got it right here. There's another baby buffalo here in the Karanga. The lions have killed two baby buffalo. I don't think the buffalo can see this lioness. She's looking. She's killing it now. Wow. This is unbelievable. In a matter of minutes, the lions have wiped out the only two calves in this herd. But with this many mouths to feed, they'll have to kill again soon, and Andy will have to be ready. Even with two kills in one spot, he missed key moments in the hunt. Wow, that happened so fast. This is the challenge Andy faces. For all the waiting, chances like these are over in an instant. To stay ahead of the game, He'll need every advantage he can get. And the collar on this lion may be his next break. <laughs> Wildlife cameraman Andy Casagrande's mission to film big cats make a kill depends on his ability to locate them on the hunt. Lion prides range over 600 square kilometers. With only two weeks to film, Andy needs a lead to focus his search and get ahead of the action. The Serengeti Lion Project. The Serengeti Lion Project has been tracking the lions here for decades. This guy's cool. Yeah. How's yeah, it going? he's a bit beat up. Pretty good. How you doing? Oh, well, you know. Field researcher Ali Swanson always has the latest intel. I will say the highest densities of lions are going to be right around here, so in the more wooded areas. Okay. Um, so, which pride did you say would be, you know, if you had to pick a pride to go with for a hunt and a kill? These guys, the Macoma Gypsies out near the hippo pool, have been killing a lot of buffalo recently. Andy explains that he's just seen a pride led by a radio collared female take down two buffalo in one hunt. Ali suspects it's a family group called the Macoma Gypsies. So what's the best way I can track these guys down? There's a collared female in every pride. Um, we use radio telemetry to track our lions. I can lend you a receiver box if you want. 
The callers transmit a signal Andy can use to hone in on the lead lioness. Cheers. Cheers. He dials in her frequency and sets off. The signal grows louder as he closes in. And finds the pride again. This clan is in its prime. Over 20 lions make this a massive pride. Lions are the only big cat that lives in a complex social group. Sleek females are built to stalk and kill, providing up to 90% of the food for the pride. Powerful male lions act as guardians of the pride territory. Thick manes are a status symbol and protect the neck in challenges for breeding rights. Lions spend up to 20 hours a day resting. It seems like laziness, but it's actually a careful survival strategy. Conserving calories from the last meal is just as important as finding the next one. But sleeping lions don't make for very interesting filming. Andy is ready for action, but the lions aren't. The next morning, Andy's back at it with the lions. When a call comes in over the radio. Andy, Andy, come in, Andy. Go ahead. Field researcher Helen O'Neill has a lead on some cheetahs that might deliver. Um, I'm with uh, female with two cubs at the moment. If you want to come and film them, they might be hunting soon. Ah, oh, cool. Thanks very much. We'll be right there. Do you got the GPS coordinates? Yeah, I'm on GPS. This may be the break Andy's been waiting for. Cheetahs are endangered, and 90% of juveniles here won't reach adulthood. Helen keeps a constant watch over the population and their hunting patterns. With two big cubs, this first-time mother will have to hunt at least once a day to keep the family fed. It's a solid bet for Andy. Thanks again for the mark. This is great. I hope you get something. Andy doesn't have to wait long. So it looks like the cheetah and her two cubs are going hunting. Experienced hunters like this cheetah use termite mounds to get a higher vantage point to look for prey. Black facial markings cut the glare under big, high-set eyes that give cheetahs extraordinary vision. A cheetah can pick out prey from nearly five kilometers away. That's better than Andy can see using binoculars. That's a cool shot. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the mom up high. Uh, She's looking, scanning, and then the little cub also starts to look and scan around. It's pretty cool. These two cubs here, they look old enough to hunt to me, but they're not hunting on their own yet. Mother cheetahs teach their cubs how to hunt. And school is in session. She's getting closer. There she goes. There she goes. goes. That's a full chase speed. She's going to lose it. She is too far to close the distance and pulls up short to save her energy. She's got to get within 100 feet of the prey before she switches on her turbo speed. Otherwise, if she starts her hunt any further back, she's going to run out of energy. Family presses on, searching for more prey. The thing about cheetahs is that 50% of their hunts are successful kills, but 50% of the kills they make are stolen by lions, hyenas, even vultures can bully cheetahs off their kills. It's a tough life for the cheetah. 
It's it is. The only way for this family to survive is to kill. She's going. She stalks into striking distance, then bursts into action. She's coming for security full speed. Andy has to track a target moving at over 100 kilometers per hour. At that speed, she's out of range in a matter of seconds. She got a one. She got a one. Whoa. Go, 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 go. So the cheetahs just made a kill, but it's happened out of our range. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't get too close. Don't speak her off. For the Cubs, dinner is served. The family feeds quickly before anything can move in to steal their hard-won meal. So there you have it. Mother and two cubs happy and having dinner. And with another kill under mom's belt, it's another step closer for the baby cheetah cubs to learn how to hunt on their own. And I'm sure they will. Tracking the hunting lesson has paid off for Andy as well. He's captured the chase in super slow motion. But he's after a kill. And he's about to get the chance to send his cameras closer than ever. For an inside look at that killer bite. Wildlife cameraman Andy Casagrande has just one week left to film a complete hunt in the Serengeti. He's got to take advantage of every opportunity to capture a killer shot, and he's just spotted a new one. So we got a big male lion feeding up here. I'm not sure what it's killed, but it's always impressive to see big males make a kill. Can you keep going? Maybe I can get a shot and try you. Okay, good. Stop. The zebra weighs nearly 300 kilograms. Looks like it's hard work. He's really working hard to get that zebra through the grass. He's just dragging under a tree, and now he's got his buddy there, another male, and they're hanging out. Sees an opportunity here to get his cameras closer than ever. They've made a kill on their own, a zebra, but they're not feeding it, they're just cooling off under a tree. This is the perfect time to deploy the camouflage killer. I want to creep him out there, get him into position, and line him up for a killer shot. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to roll him up to these big lions and see what shots he can get for us. Good luck, dude. to these two big male lions. All they're doing right now is looking at it. <laughs> they're just checking it out. I'm gonna creep it in a little closer and uh, see what happens. I'm amazed. One of the males is just sitting there completely unaffected, totally unimpressed. So what I want to do now is zoom the camouflage killer up to the zebra kill. These lines right now are pretty relaxed, but I think if I zoom it around to their zebra kill, they will get, well, I'm not sure what they'll do, but I think we should find out. I 
think I just drove the camera car into the zebra carcass. That was a reason. The lines are both standing up. They're definitely now more interested in the car because it's a competitor. This is awesome. <laughs> Got the camo kid right up next to the lions. I'm a crazy cameraman, but I'm not that crazy. I don't think I'd crop to big lines like this and shoot them. That's the truth. Big male is just uh, he's taking a little bite of the camera kid. They seem to be very relaxed, but they're very curious at the same time. <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, we just had a major problem. The um, camo killer has just been swatted by a big male lion. It's now flipped over. I can't believe that. We should have quit while we were ahead. The only way to retrieve the car and his cameras is for Andy to go in himself. They're on their zebra carcass, so this is a bit sketchy. The only way to get it back is to um, get out and go get it. Um, yeah, this is going to be tough. a camera. This close, the lions could snatch it in an instant. Okay. Oh, they want to get it. Okay. I'm trying. Pull forward, dude. Pull forward. That's cool. If you pull forward, I can get it. Just, just, just pull forward, dude. I can get it with my hand. This one looks like it has zebra slime or lion slime on it. And this one's still rolling. Yeah, that was awesome. That was so cool. Andy's found a way to capture the claws. And the teeth that make lions the most fearsome killers in the Serengeti. But to film a pride hunting in their home turf, Andy will have to ditch the vehicle and meet the lions head on. Wildlife cameraman Andy Casagrande is on the move in the Serengeti, where predators reign supreme. To survive in this place, every animal has to have an edge. For the Cape Buffalo, it's attitude. Wow. Buffalo just charged us, and uh, my man Richard was like that rally, rally race car driver there. That was insane, dude. You never know what to expect out here in the Serengeti. Out in the bush, Andy's vehicle is his safety cage. Outside it, the predators rule. But he's about to leave that safety behind. Lions can use elevated terrain to spy for prey and set an ambush. A scent organ in the roof of their mouths helps them smell if prey is near. Sensitive ears may let them hear it more than a kilometer away. It's the perfect place for Andy to find lions lining up their hunt. But these rugged areas are impossible to reach by car. Hey, stop here. Is it, huh? So Andy's setting out on foot to try and film lions on patrol in their home turf. Safari guide Richard Beatty will lead the expedition with Isa, a Maasai warrior and expert tracker. Moving on foot means they'll be extremely vulnerable with nowhere to run. So what's the game plan? 
You know, we've uh, positioned ourselves so we're downwind of the area we want to walk. We've got no set path. There are no paths. Yeah. You know, we're just going to go out there and we're going to look for likely places that lions would, would like to hang out. Let's do it. Isa leads the way. In the distance, Richard spots a telltale sign. Vultures. But one, two, three of them in that same area. So I kind of wonder if there is something over there, you know. They move up cautiously. In a few more paces, they discover the scene of a fresh kill. Wow, it's a zebra. Isa, what do you think killed this? Simba. Simba. Lions, huh? And you can see all the scar markings right on its face. The evidence is conclusive. Lions are prowling this area. Wow. When do you think it was killed? So Issa saying this zebra was most likely killed last night and killed by Simba, by the lions. The carcass is a powerful reminder. Lions are made to kill, and it can happen in an instant. The thing we've got to be aware of, though, is that if these lions took this down only last night, they just gorge themselves. But then after they gorge themselves, they don't go far before they flop down in the shade and just sleep, sleep it off. Yeah. So we need to be on our toes, and they're probably watching us right now. Well, so maybe we just keep moving generally in this direction, but as I say, we've got to be really on it now, because they're around here somewhere. And we don't want to be the next one of those. Isa picks up the trail. Okay, lion tracks. Lions could be anywhere up ahead. Isa makes the first sighting. So we spotted a lone lioness on the rocks here. We're trying to creep up to get a better shot. But there's likely other lions in the grass here, so you gotta stick close and be on alert. The lions appear only in flashes. Oh. Lisa's just spotting another one moving around over there. I think there's quite a few of them. Richard makes a game plan. We'll cross the gully, and then we'll try and get up on that higher ground. We're going to have to stay really tight and really alert, because these guys will come and rip your head off. Lions can use these outcroppings to spot prey and set ambushes. The group is completely exposed to attack. Andy scrambles up the rocks to go for a shot. But the lions have vanished, disappearing into the landscape like ghosts. Out here, the lions control every advantage especially at night. If Andy wants to get the shots, he'll have to change his tactics and stalk the lions when they hunt most in total darkness. <laughs> Wildlife cameraman Andy Casagrande is in the Serengeti to film lions and cheetahs taking down their prey. But to capture a complete hunt, Andy needs everything to come together in the right place at the right time. And he's running into roadblocks. Weather blows in. Here comes the rain. Equipment breaks down. So we've got a cheetah on the hunt. I'm here with a $300,000 camera. And uh, it's out of batteries. It just died. And the vehicles take a constant beating. It broke down again. It was fanned out last time. And it was the steering rod. This is supposed to be straight? It's meant to be straight. It's not that bent. Then it was the diesel leaking. 
the gas is still leaking. This is a little bit, uh, a little bit stressful. To get the shots he came here for, Andy needs a new way to track down the action. At dawn, he sets off for an aerial recon flight over the plains. We're heading up in a hot air balloon over the Serengeti at sunrise. Wait up, wait up. Andy surveys the terrain these predators use to give them a tactical advantage. The flight gives Andy a new sense of the landscape and a discovery. Lions on the ground below and a buffalo kill nearby. Check it out, we got three lions looking right at us in the hot air balloon. Looks like a male, a female, and a little subadult. The hunt is over, but this big kill is perfect for staging another special camera. He marks the spot with his GPS and starts the descent back to camp. The sun is setting as Andy tracks down the scene of the kill. We're getting close to that GPS point. He finds the entire pride feeding in the tall grass. A little further. Oh, keep going. Yeah, stop, 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 stop. That's too little. The light is too low for his slow motion camera. But Andy can use the dark to his advantage. Welcome to night filming. We're here with a big pride of lions. We've got special permission to be out here in the Serengeti at night. It's pitch black and the whole pride is feeding. I can't see anything with my own eyes, but I've got a night vision camera. I'm gonna get it kitted up and show you what it's like to feed with lions at nighttime. You're gonna like this. Wow, Richard, kill that light. Perfect. Andy's night vision camera amplifies ambient light and produces a stunning image in nearly complete darkness. Wow. You can see how powerful they are. They're just ripping the meat right off the bone and they're even crunching through the bone. That lioness is hungry. The pride males take the largest share, even though they weren't involved in the hunt. Eye shine displays one advantage lions exploit in the cover of night. Lions have excellent night vision. They have reflective lenses in their eyes. They bounce and reflect light and allows them to amplify it, just like my camera. Their keen sight allows them to be most active at night when the air is cooler. Little cubs in there feeding with their moms. Dad in there taking a bite. This is what's so cool about lions. The lionesses are the hunters and the males. They protect the pride in the territory. So everyone has a role and everyone benefits from being in the pride. It's a powerful portrait of what makes lions the dominant force in the Serengeti. But Andy's here to film a hunt from start to finish. And he's about to get his chance with the fastest land animal on Earth. These are Andy Casagrande's final days of filming in the Serengeti, and he still hasn't captured everything he came for. He wants a full hunt. With that moment of impact, when predator meets prey, and he's just found the perfect candidates to get him the shots. So we've spotted three male cheetah. Looks like a coalition of brothers. Three male cheetahs are very formidable and they can take down big prey like wildebeest, zebra, and even ostrich. Female cheetahs are wandering loners, but brothers like these stick together for life, patrolling their territories. This coalition has seen better days. So the 
three Malchinas are on the hunt. And they look very, very hungry. They're very skinny and tired looking, and I don't think they've eaten in a few days, so they're definitely gonna make a kill. And we gotta get this one. Andy sights up his angle. So the three males are on the hunt. The grass is way too tall here, so I gotta go up to the top of the roof, set up the camera there, and see what we can get tops up. Others spot a reed buck moving in and take cover. Andy rolls his camera just in time. The reed buck doesn't see the cheetahs hidden in the grass. Until too late. Andy's nailed the attack. He races up to cover the kill. killed a reed buck right here in the open plains. Kind of happened in tall grass, but I got the shot. Now they're feeding. I want to pick up some slow motion shots of these guys feeding. They looked really, really hungry. And uh, obviously they were. They made a successful kill. Wow. That was cool. Lucky, lucky. Lucky, yeah. yeah. <laughs> lucky. Finally, all the pieces have come together right in front of Andy's camera. The stock, chase, takedown, and kill. This reed buck, I don't think it saw the cheetah, ran across the field and straight into the trap. There was a very brief chase because the reed buck ran pretty much straight into him. The cheetahs didn't really have to run that fast or that far. It was a definite takedown and uh, good to see these guys feeding. So this is what it's all about. Being a wildlife cameraman, you live for these kind of days where you're with the animals, they're hungry, they're stalking, they're hunting, and now they're feeding. Andy has taken his cameras inside the hunt and captured the tools, the tactics, and the kills that make these predators the legends of the Serengeti. <laughs>